Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. In this episode, I'd like to walk you through the steps of creating a 3D component from a JPEG or a picture. There are several ways that this could be accomplished. One of them is the create component from bitmap option within the Aspire software. I'd like to show you a way that produces higher quality 3D models, in my opinion. It's going to take vector drawing and creating shapes. It's not a quick process, so you'll have to take your time and understand the end result before you get started. Here's how it works. I bring in a picture that I have. This picture was designed by a friend of mine, Indra McCraw. She's a great graphic designer, stained glass painter, illustrator. I've known her for many, many years. I asked her for permission if I could use this to create a 3D model. Copyright infringement is one of the things we should always consider. She was gracious enough to allow me to use this. And the first step is simply to draw the vectors. In this case, the trace bitmap option didn't work really well because of the lack of contrast between the drawing itself and the background paper color. I started with different layers, naming them appropriately, and also choosing different colors simply so I can see what I'm doing. I have the body and the beak and the feathers I drew the vectors for the legs. The fox is done in individual closed vectors. The towel on the fox's arm. The seat. And some background decoration. That's it for about the vectors. Again, it's not terribly hard to do. It just takes a bit of practice so that you can have nice flowing lines. Node editing is crucial. Also, how many nodes you have for the vectors. So let's take a closer look at how you create components. I have the vector that we drew for the body. Select the vector, click on the Create Component icon, and select the shape that you'd like. In this case, the body I said was a domed shape with a flat top. Make sure you name it correctly. It will help you in the long run. You can adjust it as need be. There's no set rules whatever you like to see or what's most appropriate for the model. Hit apply. Select the next set of vectors or shapes that you'd like to create. In this case it's the feather. I've made a large vector feather and I'm going to create a component of that sh base shape of the feather. This is where your artistic sense comes in. You can have a rounded shape of a feather or a flat shape or something in between possibly. You can adjust the shape height of the feather and the base height, either or. You're always working towards what you see in the 3D view. Once you have the shape that you're happy with, you need to then create the little spline of the feather. It adds a little extra detail that most people forget about. It's just a few vectors, closed vectors, to create that extra piece. Once I have the component parts of the feather together and I'm happy with them, I have a habit of making a model, a separate component from those multiple items. That way I'm only working with one component with multiple parts. I then take that component and resize it down and place it where it needs to be. The next step is the rest of the little feathers and again you select the vector and create the shape. This is that tedious part that I refer to on a regular basis. The trick here is knowing whether or not one feather is on top of the other or below it. You may need to adjust the shape height or the base height. You may need to tilt or fade it so that it sort of looks right. This process is the same for any model you plan on creating. It's vector drawing and creating components. The same goes for the, the large shoulder feathers. It's 
simply the vector that I drew and I created a domed shape. The head and neck, again, closed vectors, create a component shape. A little dish shape for the eye socket. Part of my work habit is to create levels and layers. Trying to put them all on one level or one layer becomes difficult at times, especially when the model gets to be very complicated. And of course, naming them so you know what you're referencing is important. Even though this may look rather simple, it's not as easy as it seems, but it is doable. You just have to take your time and be patient. If you need some help creating components, you may want to check out our 3D Modeling for Newbies series here on our channel. The last one in this example is the beak. I'm not going to go through the entire 3D model of the fox and the stork, but I think at this point you get to see the bit-by-bit -bit process. It's the vector drawing and creating components. Part of the important factor to remember is how do those components interact with one another on its own level and how those levels interact with each other. We change the property so that it's set to merge and the beak now sets by itself. You can adjust the shape height of that or the, and the base height of it and it starts to take shape. So let's go through this one more time showing more of the components, not how they're made, but how they interact with one another and you'll get to see the picture come alive. Everybody knows that I start from the bottom up. So I started with the body, created a domed shape flat top so I limited the height of the component to what looks appropriate. There's no rule. It's your design. You can do what you'd like. I then added some feathers. You can see they're individual feathers, not just one lump of feathers. I chose the next set of vectors for the top feathers, basically what I'll call the shoulder. And here's where you would fill in with more detailed feathers if necessary. Now we're not planning on actually reproducing exactly this because in the end we're going to take the picture and create a component from that picture and use it as a skin that will lay on top of all of these components. Imagine a bed sheet, if you would, on top of a mattress. I created the component for the legs, keeping everything somewhat individual so that I can manipulate them and move them and adjust them. The head and neck are two different components, one for the basic shape and one for more of the details. How they interact with one another is critical and also at your discretion. My bottom rule of thumb is how does it look in the 3D view? I work towards that end result. And then I add the beak. It's starting to take shape. I have different layers and different levels. Starting with the fox, the mouth, there's a slight indentation as well as extra components for the eyebrow and the eyelid. The tail got a little bit of special attention to make it look more fur-like, more tail-like if you would. A little bit of sculpting was included in that. His other arm. And some of the other items that were needed within the design. The ball was not made from vectors. It was simply a small dome that was then cut and the top part deleted. So it was rather quick. The chair had its individual parts, the three legs, the support ring at the bottom, the seat,
and also the indent for the seat itself. It gives it better depth and dimension with that indent, don't you think? So let's close these levels and create the component skin that I want to use and then see how it looks. I selected the image, the picture, and made a component from it. You can see it adds the texture that I'm looking for. I've eliminated the part where the napkin is or the towel on the fox's arm because I didn't like originally the texture that was produced. I would rather have a smoother looking towel or napkin. So now let's put the other pieces underneath it and see how it turns out. There we are. 3D art from picture. It's not complicated, but tricky. Here's the end result. I cut it out of HDU, high density urethane, and I used a bronze paint with a little bit of patina to darken it. Of course, I then sent it up to Indra as a gift, which she was very grateful to see her work produced in the 3D world. There are many suppliers of bronze paint like this. I use sophisticated finishes from Tricoat. Modern Masters has a few, as well as Sculpt Nouveau. Try it. You may like it. The next example has a little different approach to it. I was asked to create a 3D model of Dunluce Castle. It's the castle from Game of Thrones. I started doing the normal draw the vectors, add the skin on top of it to create the textures, but I came up with something a little bit more interesting. I actually found a blueprint of the castle. With that information, I drew the vectors. And from those vectors, I created com straight components. It's a bird's eye view of the castle. I'm not sure exactly how high in the Z I made these components. Maybe an inch. Just to give me the placement of the buildings and the walls. And as you can see, if I rotate it around, it starts to look like the castle. Because I use the castle drawing as my basis for the positioning and placement of the components. I made a model of my components. And I exported it. In a new session of Aspire, I import the castle model that I created previously, and I cut the castle apart so that I can adjust the Z height of those component parts individually. I add a few extra parts to the castle so it fills out the structure. Of course, I create a component from the bitmap and lay it on top. It's that skin, as I call it. I add some rocks to the front. These are just some clip art models that are found within the software. A few extra little pieces, the left-hand side bridge, the water, the clouds. Again, all found within the software more rocks to fill out the scene and the grass on top. 
And there we have it, Dunluce Castle. From my understanding, my client told me he was going to be making these and selling them in the castle's gift shop. He lives only down the road a bit. I don't know if it's true. Sounds like a good story. I'd like to believe it. My work hangs in the gift shop of Dunluce Castle. So in review, all I needed to do was draw some vectors, create some components, and add the skin on top of it. Is it difficult? A little bit. Complicated? Most definitely. You need to think through it before you actually start so that you can have the right layers and the right components and in the correct position in relationship to one another. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of our new videos. And of course, as always, if you need help, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.